Good morning and welcome to worship here at Baltic and East Niederos Lutheran Parish. I'm Pastor Randall Quested and we're glad that you have joined us as you are this day uh, online. Uh, obviously if you're watching this morning, you're watching us on Facebook Live from Baltic Lutheran. Uh, later this worship will be posted on YouTube on our channel there. We have learned that this word is going out to places we never have expected, and here is one example. Uh, last Sunday, uh, no, the service did not go to the dog, but the dogs came to us to hear what was going on, and so uh, this was kind of fun to see. We do have some announcements to bring to your attention. Today, last week, we recognized our seniors from our parish who graduated yesterday and today, and uh, among those, we want to mention their names once again. Dylan Franz, Amber Hartman, Elliot Hawks, Michaela Olson, Sam Sidig, Brody Tevedal, Riley Thorpe, Brianna Turner. And we also know that uh, many have graduated beyond high school and in our community, so we recognize not just those in our parish, but also those uh, in our community that uh, are graduating in a much different way this year. We also realize that uh, it's not just high school graduations that are happening. Within our parish, Heather Peterson received her master's degree, so we want to recognize her for accomplishing that great goal. And I'll be a little uh, selfish, or, and I will recognize also my daughter, Katie Huckman, who also would be graduating today, and uh, she was feeling bad that I wasn't going to come to her graduation because of worship services when it was announced early on, and as it turns out, she's not going either. But uh, we are, we still recognize these people for their great accomplishments. Um, to go a little bit further into my family, I guess, last Sunday as our worship began, I announced, as I should have, I guess, that uh, we were about to have a baby that morning, and I realized after worship that probably wasn't the announcement I was supposed to make. But it came anyway, and so uh, Sunday afternoon, Judah James Janice was born, another grandson to us, number eight of my grandchildren, and the very next day, Renly Jean Cuesta was born to my son and daughter-in-law. So uh, I have to make that announcement, and uh, it's uh, the things that we can rejoice in, even during this time. A couple further announcements I'd like to bring to your attention. This past week, both church councils met independently uh, through Zoom meetings, and of course the question many are wondering and asking and still to be determined are when, are we, when will we be joining in person to meet again. And the decision was uh, made at both councils uh, to wait certainly through May, and then both councils are going to be meeting the second week in June, June 9th and June 10th. And we'll be revisiting to see what is happening in our community as other businesses are open. Uh, it still remains our utmost intention to keep people safe. And uh, so we're going to be reevaluating that uh, at that time. And we're looking at whatever options are possible uh, to begin worshiping again. So uh, just an update on that. Then also, uh, members from Baltic Lutheran will be receiving... A letter this week uh, being sent out just updating you on our parking lot project, a project that was talked about uh, at our annual meeting, and uh, uh, it was hard to tell what order to do things because we wanted to know what things would cost, yet we didn't wanted to know how much money was being raised. So there will be a letter going out updating you on that, and uh, it is the council and church's desire that we can raise the rest of the money that is needed so that this project can still be completed this fall. So please look forward to receiving that letter in the mail uh, this week. We have other things to recognize, uh, and we have happy birthdays going out to Joanne Alberts, Lily Sarah, his birthday too, Keaton Harvey, my one who would have been confirmed this year, but waiting to fall, Norma Johnson, probably as our eldest member at Baltic Luther now, uh, is turning 92, and it just seems like last year, but it's two years ago that we were celebrating with her uh, for her 90th birthday, and I remember because it was a very warm day that we went out and celebrated with her, and Rob Simmons, we wish you all 
all a happy birthday. Anniversaries. Ryan and Norma Cindy are having an anniversary this week, and we give thanks uh, for that as well. So with all those things to give thanks for, let us have a prayer. Good and gracious God, we do come before you with thanksgiving and praise, and one of our prayers is to give thanks for all of our graduates and their accomplishments that they've made. We ask that you go, be, go with them as they go on to new ventures in their life, and we pray that the word that has been put into their hearts from this place will continue to go with them as you have promised that it would do. Be with those who are celebrating birthdays and let celebrations uh, still remain uh, important things in our lives as we travel through these uncertain times. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, then we, <laughs> it's today, so we can't ignore that. And uh, so I'd like Jody to read what that says. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is happy sitting to my. What do you suppose sitting to my sounds like? My May 17th. Oh, sitting to my is the 17th of May, which recognizes the signing of the Constitution of Norway and their kind of Independence Day, their Fourth of July deal. And we thought we'd just bring that to your attention today since both of our churches have rich Norwegian heritage. When we look at our altar and the architecture of both of our churches. It comes from our Norwegian heritage, and uh, it's not that we're honoring today, but we do remember it. Uh, we do remember uh, that was an important day, 17th of May, and it happens to be that today. So, with that too, there's celebrations going on in Norway, and I don't know how Pastor Tom is dealing with that today, with the, blue, with the Norwegian and a Swedish congregation, and one is separated from each other, but they uh, will handle that just well. With that, we began our worship. And so, uh, we do that with opening with, the, with our uh, gathering song, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. Oh, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. The word is near you, on your, your lips, lips and in, in your, your heart. heart. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and, and believe, believe in your, your heart, heart that, that God, God raised him from the dead, dead you will be saved. saved. Faith comes from what is heard. And, and what, what is, is heard, heard comes through the, the word of Christ. Christ. Together we sing our scripture song. <laughs> Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ alone forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God of the universe. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of all nations. Who can fail to honor? Because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance of all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for being good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ who suffered for sins once for all, the righteous of the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and power made to subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join as we sing Jesus Loves Me and the children when we get the children's attention and maybe they'll come forward closer to the TV this morning so that they can see. We just have gotten in, we're still in the season of Easter, but it began in Ash Wednesday, and what does this picture represent, of course? Empty tomb. Which happened when? Easter. On Easter. Okay, how many days are between Ash Wednesday and Easter? 40 days. Nope, 46. <laughs> you don't count that was a trick question. Uh, because we don't count the Sundays, and even then we sometimes are a day or two off. But we also learned that this 40 days isn't always just an exact number. Uh, it, it means a long period of time. So in the Bible we say, this went on for 40 days and 40 nights, which we are feeling now as well too. Okay, since this is Easter, this must be Easter. And what is happening in this picture? The ascension. Jesus is ascending in heaven. He's not coming down. He is leading the disciples. And next Sunday we're going to hear that story uh, 
uh, more of that story. But that doesn't happen next Sunday. It actually happens this Thursday, May 21st, because guess how many days are between Easter and Ascension Day? It is 40, yeah. <laughs> 39 days after Easter is when Ascension happens. So these are important days. So I want you to remember that number, 40 days. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are in a period of what seems to be 40 days and 40 nights, even though it's gone on much longer than that. In all of these stories in the Bible, you have been with everyone who is experiencing trials during long periods of time. We thank you that you are with each one of us during these 40 days, and we know that you are with us, and because of that, we know that uh, you will help us through. And all this, we pray in Jesus' name, and all the children said, Amen. Amen. Together, we sing the gospel acclamation. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Usually we don't think of God as a delaying kind of person. We have a God who gets things done and gets them done quickly. The creation story that's recorded in Genesis does not take long to tell. It's recorded in simply two chapters of the Bible. You would think that maybe there would be a whole book of the Bible that would be dedicated to all that he made. But Genesis isn't about God thinking about what he was going to create and then going on to describe why he did what he did. Rather, God said, let there be, and it was created. It was created quickly. When Jesus came to the tomb of his friend Lazarus, he didn't wait to make a plan to deal with the odor that Lazarus would be having since he would have been dead in the tomb four days. Rather, Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. Another example was when Jesus came to the bedside of the leader of the synagogue's daughter, who too had just died, Jesus didn't wait for the leader to promise something in exchange in order to restore her to life. Instead, Jesus said, little girl, get up. And she got up immediately and she began to eat. There are many examples where the Trinity wastes no time in accomplishing what it sets out to do. But in our second lesson reading for today from 1 Peter, we are reminded of a time when God waited patiently in the time of Noah, rather than acting quickly. And 
waiting is not a trait that many of us are very good at, or like, and I am certainly among that group. If we wait, we do so probably impatiently, not patiently, as God did for Noah to finish the ark. I know that if I go to a restaurant and have to wait more than 20 minutes to be seated, and hopefully you remember the days when we used to sit down and eat in restaurants, and I hope that time is soon arriving again. Well, if that happens to me, I would quickly think of another eating option so I could be served without the wait. Whenever something is ordered online, they often tell you when to you, you can expect to receive it. Even online shippers know that we are impatient people and want to know when we will receive what we are waiting for. If we know that something is going to happen, Maybe we, too, need to wait patiently. God's patient waiting in the time of Noah gives us a glimpse of God's patient waiting that he still does today. Before the flood came, the Lord had already predestined who he would save from the flood waters. It didn't happen afterwards. It was before. The Lord came to Noah and promised to save he his wife, his three sons, and their wives from the flood waters. Eight people were saved, as we are told in the lesson for today. The Lord didn't wait patiently because he had wanted to see if those eight people that he had chosen would accept the promise that he had given to them. The Lord wasn't patiently waiting for others to decide to get on the ark. The Lord simply patiently waited for Noah to finish building the ark before the 40 days of rain began. The promise that the Lord would save these eight people was not contingent on Noah and his family's willingness to participate. There was no urgency for the Lord to become impatient with Noah and his family. The promise had been given, and so we are told that God waited patiently. God does not promise to save us or you from the floodwaters that may surround you in this life. We know many people are experiencing deep uh, suffering at this time. But he promises something far greater. The special music that we heard this morning from Lacey Branham describes what these greater blessings look like. In each verse of the song, it tells that we, what we pray for compared to what we experience in our life. We pray for comfort for our families, but sometimes we experience suffering. We pray for unity and peace, but often experience loneliness and separation. This does not mean that God is patiently waiting to see how you will get through these trials on your own. It does mean that God, who is an abundant source of mercy, is about to come your way. My favorite line from this song emphasizes the unfailing word of God when it says, as if every promise from your word is not enough. God's word is enough for you and I. And this is our sin when we believe that we must add something to God's word in order for the promise to be fulfilled. This is not why God waits patiently. He doesn't wait to see what you might do with the promise. In our second lesson for today, Peter says that the story of the flood prefigures our baptism. It can be so easy to skip over or at least minimize the powerful promise given in baptism that Peter so clearly states. Peter is the one who often says things and Jesus interrupts him, but not this time. When Peter spoke it, he meant it, and these are words that you need to hear again. Peter said, and baptism now saves you. It saves you. There's nothing more to add, and there's nothing that can be taken away from this wonderful promise. After the promise of being delivered from sin and death, and the promise of eternal life is given by God our Father, he simply waits patiently. He waits patiently for what? God patiently waits for more people to hear this wonderful promise of salvation, 
God has not shut the door of salvation by limiting eight people into the ark to be saved from the floodwaters of destruction. Instead, God has opened the way to salvation for everyone through the flood of water poured out in baptism. And he waits for more to hear this great good news. This Thursday is remembered as the day that Jesus ascended into heaven. Jesus told us in the gospel from dawn for today, in a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. We are living in this time when we no longer see Jesus, but we are not left alone. Jesus has told us that he has given us another advocate, the Holy Spirit. And as we will confess again today in the Apostles' Creed, Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and died for his sins, and yes, he ascended into heaven. But we live in a time of God's patient waiting while we continue to proclaim his word to those who have not yet heard. We live in a time of confidence, knowing that because Jesus lives, we too will live. After reading the gospel earlier this week, my mind was drawn to these words. Because he lives, I shall live also. So I thought the Gaither hymn, Because He Lives, was an appropriate hymn for this day. And I had really hadn't looked at the second verse until I had started writing the sermon. And I want you to pay particular attention to that, and it certainly hit me this week. These words are, How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. This verse really stuck with me with the addition of our two grandchildren within two days this week. I don't remember any days in my life as uncertain as the days that these two were born into this week. But the uncertainty of these days is overcome by the promise that we can face tomorrow and today because Jesus arose from the grave and lives again. Our impatience of wanting to know when these trials of these days and this life is overcome by God's word of promise that God's timing is perfect and God's mercy is yours today. And now life is worth the living because he lives. Amen. Thank you. 
In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living in together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Behold, everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and one another. Gracious God. Have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another and live in peace. And now the peace of the Lord be with all of you always. And, and also, also with you. you. Once again, we give thanks for the offerings that have continued to come into our church to support our ministry, and so we sing our offertory hymn. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to knowledge of the truth. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For the church of God here and everywhere, that all who confess Jesus Christ may be united in doctrine and witness, we pray for this parish, for the work of God's kingdom in our community, and for the resources to accomplish all that God desires, that his name may be glorified among us and his purpose fulfilled in our words and in our works. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. 
for the agencies and institutions through which we love our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment, that we may aid them in their needs and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all of their needs. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the fellowship of the church, that we may bear one another's burdens and live in community with Christ as our head. God of mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the sick and those who suffer. Today, we especially raise before you the names that have been brought to us to give to at your altar. Today, we pray for Judy Oyam, Tanya Vallon, Rhoda Wold, Norman Nielsen, Norman Nyhaug, Ordell Krogsted, Paul Romsdahl, Paul Thompson, Art Odland, Wayne Reet, John Jurgensen, Linda Smalls, Dale Pekosh, Daryl McMahon, Jerome Johnson, Mike Christofferson, Ron Seen, Leroy Koopman, Dawn Williams, Adam Hanish, Karen Bauman, and the family of Betty Taylor. And now we raise before you names that we raise before you silently from our hearts. We pray that God would grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and consolation in their grief and sorrows. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For this nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic, for peace among nations, and for an end to terror and violence, that we may work for the common good so that justice may prevail, life may be protected, and truth abound. God of mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, as you recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son, our Lord, and his salvation, we pray that you would strengthen our faith and to make our hearts bold that we may not fear, but address our prayers to you in all humility. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who even now stands before you on our behalf, pleading our cause with his own blood until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life and stand before you in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. And once again, together we sing, let it be said of us as our sending hymn. Thank you. 
Yes, yes we, we will. will. Thanks be to God. Thank you.